Hey everybody, Scott with another tool thought. Kicking around out here in my garage and uh, figured I'd do a one week review on the new tool bag. Uh, as you know, it's the Velocity Rogue 9.0 uh, service bag and it is the bag that I've been waiting for. Uh, I previously had the 6.0. As you know, that thing is an awesome bag. I've done many reviews of it. But uh, she just got too heavy, man. I mean, I, I loaded that thing up and it, it was just killing me. It was like 65, 70 pounds. My, my uh, work associate has the exact same bag and he's facing the same issue. As I said before, I went into a smaller veto because this one wasn't around yet. Uh, it served its purpose, but uh, there were a lot of things I had to leave behind because they wouldn't fit in there. This thing is, for me, a low volt AV, home theater security, uh, ethernet network guy. It's perfect. So, uh, I'll uh, I'll take you around the bag. Maybe I'll do a tool bag tour since it's been three years since I've done one. So on the outside, I just added a uh, a tape loop, run of the mill tape loop. It didn't come with one. It's an easy enough thing to add. Uh, you know, you got the pockets on the side. I got a Pika Dry Reach pencil, a uh, X mark. I think that is deep hole marker. Perfect. Uh, pocket for a level got an extension there another pencil and a reach marker on top i've got my raptor leatherman raptors clipped in got to have a pair of scissors with you it's a good place for them they don't get in the way now the bag didn't have a clip for a tape measure so i added one so what this is it's made by comalon uh, let's flip it around here for you come on and uh, what it is is it's just a, a clips onto the bags handle nicely it doesn't you know it doesn't come off unless you want it to which is what I was looking for uh, you swap out the tapes normal clip for this it's a little chipped I dropped it or something but uh, it slides in there and it will not come off unless you want it to so I added that uh, you just push this button and it comes off I got a headlamp on the side, got some Sharpies in there, drywall saw, uh, an awl, and a phone charger. And I believe that's it for the back. Uh, these clips are awesome. Uh, they're where the shoulder straps go if you're going to use it as a, uh, as a backpack type. Uh, Velocity, if you're watching, watching or listening, is there a way to get the D-rings? that PB Plumber talked about when he first introduced this bag because they weren't in the box. Uh, he said they'd be coming with it. So I don't know if they fell out or, or if you have to buy them separately, which I'm fine with. Please just let me know in the comment section. Uh, on the outside, these pockets, uh, I've got some little oiler packets, uh, ballast all wipes. I like to keep oil on some of my tools. Uh, in here, I've got some magic erasers and a microfiber for after hanging TVs. There's usually fingerprints on it. Uh, thankfully, Samsung has started to put a screen protector on the front of their displays, which is uh, quite helpful. Uh, this pocket here, it's just quick grab drilling implements, paddle bits, and things of that nature. It's a real nice, real nice pocket, real nice leather. I like it a lot. Uh, so we're, let's go into the inside. Drop the back down. And here's the front. Sorry, I'm doing this all one-handed, guys. So at the top, you've got some nice, deep, uh, you know, skinny pockets, I call them. Now, the ones on the Vitos are very short. These I like better because, you know, if I was to drop this wrench, uh, this F wrench for F fittings on coax, down in there, it would disappear down that hole. So it's easier for me to just to stuff some paper towels or something down in there to get it to stick up to the height that I want, which is what I've done here. So uh, I've got, you know, an F wrench. I've got a little small Philo micro ratchet driver with a number three on it. Uh, Milwaukee's step bit. Now I've been using step bits for a long time and this is the greatest one I've ever used. It's nice and hard, doesn't wear down real easy, and it's super aggressive. 
And then I got some cheapy ones here that I got from like a part store for 10 bucks for like the three pack. Uh, I got some extensions, the uh, Milwaukee ones that uh, slide out to help the screw stay on there. They came in a three pack. There's one currently in my impact gun and then there's a long one in this one. Got the Lennox Ratcheter uh, tweaker screwdriver. Love that little guy. And I got my Snap-on standard tweaker. Love that. Uh, down here, the greatest stud finder, in my opinion, ever made. Simple. Locks onto the screws. This thing rarely fails me. Now, there's one thing about this. If you're marking for studs for a TV and you're going along, you've got to make sure that you mark studs that are going to be behind the TV or you're going to screw up somebody's paint job when you go to erase the marks off of the wall if you have to. So what I've recently discovered is this one, uh, stud mark. It's the same principle. It's got rare earth magnets, but when you need to mark a stud, you don't use a pencil. You just pop this magnet off, stick it to the wall, you know, where your stud is, and then you find another one, pop this one off, stick it on there. That's two studs marked. And then the third one would be this one. For hanging TVs and things like that, three studs is just about perfect uh, for marking. So this will leave no marks on the walls or anything. And it's basically the same uh, concept as the little CH Hansen there. I'm going to keep both of them in my bag, but... Uh, let's see, left to right, I got a Lennox beaten screwdriver, a Vessel beater, number three, uh, screwdriver, I use this for just running Samsung bolts in, you know, you don't need to run them in under power. The thing about this one is it's an Impacta, and it's a, you know, it'll, um, rotate 12 degrees if you hit it and knock large fasteners loose. Not that you want to be doing that on back of panels or anything, but... That's its main purpose, but I use it for TV screws. Got the uh, snap-on ratcheting screwdriver. A uh, pair of Nipex Lyman's pliers. Got a pair of Engineer screw removal pliers, Negisaurus. Love these. Uh, under the stud finders, I have... The Sunoda flush cut zip tie pliers. Previous video on that you can check out if you don't are unfamiliar with these. A pair of needle nose, standard needle nose, channel locks. And a long reach double X gear wrench set of hemos for obvious reaching into small areas that you can't get into. They're nice. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, I got a pair of Engineer, also screw removal water pump pliers. Sorry about the camera work, guys. I'm doing this all one-handed. I got a ball driver for uh, post-install leveling on TV mounts. I wish they would have made the shaft a little bit longer for reaching down in there, but it works. Plus, it was free. Got a pair of uh, Malco Eagle Grip Made in USA locking pliers. The fit and finish on these things is absolutely amazing. I highly recommend you get a pair. A uh, set of Nipex Cobras. Nothing needs to be said about Nipex. It's top quality stuff. Um, and we got various... Let's see, I got a uh, coax crimper connector, connector crimper, RJ45 crimper, uh, coax stripper, Klein punch down tool, ideal uh, cat coax stripper, set of snap on dikes. You got a puck for punching down a, a network and telephone ins keystone inserts. All right. 
right now this stupid thing is fighting me. Uh, we got a set of Euro wire strippers. These actually help. Uh, my wrists are starting to hurt all the time now from years of doing this. So instead of pulling this way to strip a wire, these just pull straight. It seems to help a little bit. Uh, we got a antique uh, plier wrench. I love this. It's superior to a crescent wrench in my in my opinion. Um, something I rarely use is these tip nippers, but I'm afraid if I take them out of my bag, as soon as I do, I'll need them. They're, they're such a, a niche tool, but I like them. They're cool. I'll keep them in there. Uh, we got a set of Knipex, uh, cable cutters. We got a set of Knipex twin grip these are great five position they've also got the screw removal end i've used them a couple times you really can't beat the steel that knipex makes their tools out of uh we've got the obligatory pliers wrench awesome tool and the knipex cobalt uh bolt cutters mini bolt cutters Sometimes you drive a screw through something, you know, and you got to cut it off. And the minute you do that with a pair of dikes, it destroys them. That's what these are for, cutting hard objects. Uh, in here, I've got some miscellaneous tips, uh, an extra blinker, some earplugs, an iPhone converter for testing audio with a 3.5 millimeter jack. Got a um, Lennox uh, utility knife. And a set of Philo automatics. I love these uh, automatic wire strippers. They also help cut down on the joint fatigue. Um, I think that's it for the front. Sorry, guys. So back here in the back, I got a Rover flashlight. I got a cordless battery-powered glue gun for gluing uh, blinkers, IRs, emitters on TVs. I got a chicken stick or a cricket. Uh, Portisol uh, soldering iron. I got this crappy little Stanley set of uh, sockets. Um, it's only because it's the only one I could find that was this small that actually went up to a 916 socket. So it's be it's been pretty useful. It's been in there for years. Uh, we got a Hellerman Titan Evo 7 zip tie gun. Highly recommend these for cutting off tails flush. Yeah, mostly I use it for like rack work or things that are going to be visible. Like up in the ceiling or something. I just use dikes, to be honest with you. Uh, got a Milwaukee spudger. A lighted uh, inspection mirror for looking behind TVs. Some extra solder down in there. Uh, we do light, light, light electrical. So I've got uh, an insulated Robbie dry, uh, square drive. I got an insulated uh, flat tip Klein. Uh, I like this Cobalt uh, outlet tester because it actually shows the voltage there. And it's got a GFCI tester. And then I got um, Volt Claws. You know, sometimes we... We'll put in um, control four switches, Zigbee switches and stuff, and you gotta stuff a bunch of wires into the box. This is nice for pushing, and it, it'll also grab and pull and twist and whatever. Uh, also have the smaller version. It's got a hook and a push. Also a wire nut twister. Um, I think that's it for the back. Let's see, eh, probably not. In this pocket, there's just some some uh, ape tape and some uh, and a magnetic wrist, uh, you know, a wrist wrist band to hold uh, you know screws and stuff when you're doing a lot of repetitive stuff. Oh, I forgot about this long zipper at the top. That's all my fishing gear: uh, wet noodle 
little bit of extra string, things like that. And then in the bin in the top, I got my, my zip tie pouch. I got this little emergency box. This is, you know, just to get you out of a jam. You don't want to have to run to the truck. I have a bin, you know, an organizer that's fully loaded, but sometimes you only carry this bag in. Say you're working in a high-rise building in Cleveland and you're up on the 15th floor. Um, you know, we're always asking each other, you know, you got any, you know, Cat 5 connectors, Cat 6 connectors, small wire nut, small screws, and one blinker. Sometimes a, a blinker gets knocked off or destroyed by a cleaning crew. So that's my little in-case-of-emergency box. Uh, I got a crush-proof night eyes case for my reading glasses in there. Uh, Cut-in template. Um, extra lead for the Pika Dry pencil, uh, some Bondus Allen metric and standard uh, screw tips, security bits, complete set, believe it or not. More screw tips, just miscellaneous crap. And, uh, this comes out down in the bottom I've got my Milwaukee uh, impact driver little 12 volt jobby more screw tips can't have enough of those tiny crappy little hammer and in this little pocket down here I don't know if you can see that probably not but there's a separate little pocket I keep just a little first aid kit. You know, you get cut or start bleeding in somebody's, you know, $5 million house. You need to stop the bleeding quickly. You don't get stuff all over their place. So that's it. Um, so that's it, guys. This is the bag for me. I have finally found the one. Uh, it's hovering right at about 40 pounds. That's exactly where I like it. Uh, it's not too cumbersome, has everything I need in it. The only thing that's not in this bag is my meters and, and my testers, which are my least used items. Um, they're in a separate little Vito MB3, I believe it is, which works out perfectly. I keep my uh, fluke multimeter, my network tester, my cable comb, uh, and my Brady label maker all in there. I also have coax testers and things like that. So it's nice to just grab it and just take the whole little tiny bag into the to the job site if you need it. But this is my most used stuff in this bag, and uh, it serves its purpose well. Got to thank Velocity so very much for designing such a great bag, you know, for us tradespeople. And uh, the, the quality on it is unbelievable. Uh, I'm telling you, try it. You'll never go back. Uh, and with that... I'm going to end this video. Wish everybody well. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Hey, also, one more thing. It was pointed out to me after I made the original video when I got the bag about this. I called it a vent, but it's a, just a cable pass-through for you to put a power bank in this pocket that's marked with, a, you know, a power symbol. And you can leave the power bank in your bag and plug it into the wall. So just a nice, cool feature. Again, thanks, guys.